We've laid the groundwork by developing the voltage re- voltage current relationships for the field effect transistors in both the triode and the saturation region. And with that background, we're now ready to start analyzing some circuits and start to get to feel start to get a feel for how these transistors work. What are the relationships between the voltage at the drain, the cur- gate, and the source? What is the current, and is it in saturation or is it in in uh, the triode region? So for, the, for this first example, we're asked to determine the values of R sub D and R sub S that will make it so that we've got 0.4 milliamps flowing through the transistor, so the I sub D is equal to 0.4 milliamps, and the voltage at the drain is 0.5 volts. Now what can we tell from that? Well, if the voltage at the drain is 0.5 volts and the voltage at the source is, or I'm sorry, at the gate is zero, can we tell what what uh, state the transi- transistor is in? Is it in the triode state or is it in the saturation state? Well, in order for, in order for it to be saturated, we know that VDS must be greater than VGS minus VT. So the voltage at the drain doesn't need to be greater than the voltage at the gate. It simply needs to be greater than the voltage at the gate minus the threshold voltage. Well, in this situation, V sub G equals zero. It's grounded. And V sub D is 0.5. So not only is the voltage at the drain greater than the voltage of the gate minus VT, the voltage of the drain is actually greater than the voltage of the gate itself. So we therefore know that we're in the saturation region. Or we will be in the saturation region when we choose the, when we choose the resistors correctly. In the saturation region, we know that I sub D is equal to 1 half K sub N prime W over L times VGS minus VT quantity squared. And of course, that's the overdrive voltage. All right. We've got that. We know that V sub D, when we're done, is supposed to equal 0.5 volts. We know that I sub D, when we're done, is supposed to equal 0.4 milliamps. So what can we calculate at this point? Given that it's in the saturation region, we know V D D, we know V sub D, so we know the voltage across to R sub D, and we also know the current that's got to be flowing through that. So at this point, we can calculate R sub D. It's just going to be the voltage across it, which is... R sub D then is going to be the voltage across, which is 2.5 volts. Yeah, I'll go ahead and write V there. We don't, or, don't ordinarily write the units in these kinds of calculations. But 2.5 volts minus 0.5, the voltage at the drain, divided by 0.4 times 10 to the minus third. And that gives us an R sub D equal to 5 kilo ohms. Now, what else can we calculate? We still need to get R sub S. In order to get R sub S, we need to know the voltage across R sub S, which will be this voltage right there is V sub S, and we know the voltage there. How can we go about calculating V sub S? Well, if we know V sub G is zero, if we knew what V sub G S was, the voltage from the gate to the source, then we would know what V sub S was. How can we get V sub S? Or how can we get V G S? Well, we know we're in the saturation region. We know what the current is supposed to be. We've been given all of the physical quantities of this transistor that we need. We can therefore calculate V G S by plugging the rest of these values in. We've got then 0.4 times 10 to the minus third, 0.4 milliamps, is equal to one half k sub n prime is uh, mu sub n cox, which is 100 microamps per volt squared. So times 100 times 10 to the minus sixth. Uh, let's see here. Times where are we at? W over L. W is 32 microns. L is one micron. So W over L will be 32 times, I'm just going to write this as VOV squared for now. When you go through and calculate this, you get VOV is equal to 0.5 volts. So 
V G S minus V T equals point five volts or V G S equals point five plus V sub T, but we know V sub T is point seven volts, so plus point seven volts. Therefore, V G S is equal to one point two volt one point two volts. So V G S the voltage from here to here is one point two volts. So for zero, then V sub S must equal minus one point two volts. And we can now go ahead and calculate the value of R sub S. R sub S then is going to equal the voltage across R sub S, which is negative one point two, minus the voltage down here, which is minus a minus two point five volts, divided by the current of 0.4 milliamps. We'll leave it in milliamps, then our res resistor value will be in kiloohms. And we get then that R sub S is equal to 3.25 kiloohms. By choosing R sub S to be 3.25 kiloohms, R sub D to be 5 kiloohms, given this transistor, the physical parameters of this transistor, with the power supply voltages that we have, this transistor then will be operating in the saturation region with a voltage V sub D equaling 0.5. A VGS equaling, what do we get VGS to be? 1.2 volts. And VDS then would be what? Um, we're at 0.5 and we drop down to a negative 1.2. So that would be VDS. Just while we're at it, let's go ahead and calculate it. VDS would be V sub D minus V sub S, which would be 0.5 minus a minus 1.2 then VDS would equal, uh, what is that, 1.7 volts.